ಓಂ ಜ್ಞಾನಧಿಮಂದ್ಞಾನಂಜನ ಶಲಾಖಾಯ ಚಕ್ಷುರುನ್ಮಿಧೇನ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರುವೇ ನಮ ಐ ಆಫ್ ಟು ಮೈ ರಿಸ್ಪೆಕ್ಟ್ಫುಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಬೇಸಿಸ್ ಥೌಸಂಡ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಟೈಮ್ಸ್ ಲೋಟಸ್ ಫೀಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಡಿವೈನ್ ಗ್ರೇಸ್ ಐ ಸಿ ಭಕ್ತಿ ವಿನಂತ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಪ್ರಭುಪಾದ ಐ ಆಫ್ ಮೈ ಬೇಸಿಸ್ ಟು ಆಲ್ ದಿ ಪ್ರೀವಿಯಸ್ ಆಚಾರ್ಯಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಐ ಆಫ್ ಮೈ ಬೇಸಿಸ್ ಟು ಆಲ್ ದಿ ವೈಷ್ಣವ್ಸ್ ಹೂ ಹಾವ್ ಜಾಯಿನ್ಡ್ to hear Krishna Kata today and whoever listens to it in the future too. Hare Krishna. So I'm continuing um, on the thread that we left off yesterday because we were talking about the limbs of bhakti. In fact, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu spoke these to Srila Sanatana Goswami. 64 angas of bhakti and, and we had specifically focused on the five that are particularly potent because this is given by chaitanya mahaprabhu in a simplified form that is these five out of the 64 and this takes up at the chaitanya charitamrita madhya lila chapter number 22 which is entitled the process of devotional service if you're from canada it's process if you're from america text number 128 where chaitanya mahaprabhu says to sanatan sadhu sangha nam kirtana bhagavat shravana mathura va shri murtira shradhaya sevana and this means sadhu sangha means obviously association with devotees nam kirtan chanting the holy name bhagavat shravana hearing shrimad bhagavatam mathura va living at mathura shri murtira shradaya sevana worshiping the deity with faith and veneration translation one should associate with devotees chant the holy name of the lord hear shrimad bhagavatam reside at mathura and worship the deity with faith and veneration text 129 sakala sarana shreshta e pancha anga Krishna prema janmai e panchera alpa shanga. Alpa shanga means what? What does alpa mean? Just a little bit, right? And shanga? Sa anga means to be connected with something, to make it a part of your life. So alpa shanga means just a, a little bit of connection. And what is it? Sakala sadhana. all of all items for executing devotional service shreshta the best a pancha anga these five limbs krishna prema love of krishna janmaya awakens a these panchera of the five alpashanga slight association with her performance and the translation is these five limbs of devotional service are the best of all even a slight performance of these five awakens love for krishna purport shila bhakti vinod thakur points out that there are 35 items up to the point of observing special vows in the month of kartik to these 35 items another four are added namely marking tilak on different parts of the body writing the names of the lord over the body accepting the deity's garland and accepting charnamrita these four items are understood to be included by kaviraj goswami within archana within archana worship of the deity although these items are not mentioned here they are to be added to the previous 25 items thus the total number becomes 39 to these 39 should be added five others association with devotees chanting the hari krishna maha mantra reading shrimad bhagavatam regularly residing in mathura the birthplace of krishna and worshiping the deity with great respect and veneration the 39 items plus these five come to a total of 44 if we add the previous 20 items to these 44 the total becomes 64 the five five items mentioned above repeat previously mentioned items in the bhakti rasamrita sindhu shri rupa goswami states 
Anganam Panchakasya Purva Vilikitasya Nikila Shaista Budhaya Punar Apyatra Shankshanam. The glorification of these five items, association with devotees, chanting the holy name, and so on, is to make known the complete superiority of these five practices of devotional service. These 64 items of devotional service include all the activities of the body, mind, and senses. Thus, the 64 items engage one in devotional service in all respects. Text number 130. Shraddha Visheshita Priti Shri Murter Angri Sevane With love and full faith, one should worship the lotus feet of the deity. This and the this verse and the following two verses are found in the Bhakti Samrita Sindhu. <clears throat> Text number hmm. one thirty one. One should taste the meaning of Srimad Bhagavatam, the association of pure devotees, and one should associate with the devotees who are more advanced than oneself and who are endowed with a similar type of affection for the Lord. Purport. The words Sajatiya Shraye Snigde Sadhau Sangha Swatovare are very important. One should not associate with professional Bhagavatam reciters. A professional Bhagavatam reciter is one who is not in the disciplic succession or one who has no taste for bhakti yoga. Simply on the strength of grammatical knowledge and word jugglery, professional reciters maintain their bodies and their desires for sense gratification by reading Srimad Bhagavatam. One should also avoid those who are averse to Lord Vishnu and his devotees. Those who are Mayavadis, those who offend the chanting of the Hare Krishna mantra, those who simply dress as Vaishnavas or so-called Goswamis, and those who make a business of selling Vedic mantras and reciting Srimad Bhagavatam to maintain their families. One should not try to understand Srimad Bhagavatam from such materialistic people. According to the Vedic injunctions, yasya deva para bhakti, the Srimad Bhagavatam can be recited only by one who has unflinching faith in the lotus feet of Krishna and his devotee, the spiritual master. One should try to understand Srimad Bhagavatam from the spiritual master. The Vedic injunction states, bhaktya bhagavatam grayam na bhutya na chitikaya. One has to understand Srimad Bhagavatam through the process of devotional service and by hearing the recitation of a pure devotee. These are the injunctions of the Vedic literature, Shruti and Smriti. Those who are not in the disciplic succession and who are not pure devotees cannot understand the real mysterious objective of Srimad Bhagavatam and Srimad Bhagavad Gita. Text 132. Nam Sankirtan Srimad Mathura Mandale Stitihi. One should congregationally chant the holy name of the Lord and reside in Vrindavan. Purport. Srila Naratam Das Thakur said, Shri Goda Mandala Bhumi Jeba Jane Chintamani Thar Hoi Braja Bhumi Bhas. One who understands the transcendental nature of Navadweep and its surrounding area where Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu enacted his pastimes resides always in Vrindavan. Similarly, living in Jagannath Puri is as good as living in Vrindavan. The conclusion is that Navadi Dham, Jagannath Puri Dham, and Vrindavan Dham are identical. However, if one goes to Mathura Mandala Bhumi for sense gratification or to make a livelihood, he commits an offense and is condemned. Whoever does so must be penalized in the next life by becoming a hog or a monkey in Vrindavan Dham. After taking on such a body, the offender is liberated in the next life. Don't try this at home. Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur remarks that residing in Vrindavan with a view to enjoy sense gratification surely leads a so-called devotee to a lower species. Text 133. Duruhad Bhutavaviryesmin Shraddha Dure Stupanchake 
yatra svalpo pi sambandha sadhiyam bhava janmane dur uha difficult to understand adbhuta wonderful virye in the power asmin in this shraddha faith dure far away astu let it be panchake in the above mentioned five principles yatra in which swalpa a little api even sambanda connection satyam of those who are intelligent and offenseless bhava janmane to awaken one's dormant love for krishna now listen to this translation with all your might the power of these five principles is very wonderful and difficult to understand even without faith in them a person who is offenseless can awaken his dormant love of krishna simply by being a little connected with them i'll read it again the power of these five principles is very wonderful and difficult to understand even without faith in them a person who is offenseless can awaken his dormant love of krishna simply by being a little connected with them and now i want to see if you who wants me to read it one more time if you do then give me two thumbs up bali mardan prabhu hasn't put his thumbs up so i can't read it two thumbs up <laughs> <laughs> that's only one thumb up okay let's see yes all right i'm reading it again here you go the power of these five principles is very difficult is very one the power of these five principles is very wonderful and difficult to understand even without faith in them a person who is offenseless can awaken his dormant love of krishna simply by being a little connected with them and now um before we go to questions and and reflections i'm going to give you the evidence from the um bhakti rasamrita sindhu that uh, shila rupa goswami gives to support why these five are so important so the first one is about deity worship and this we'll find in the 10th canto 12th chapter 39th verse so that's 10 12 39 and herein in the story of killing the agasara demon it is said by shukri goswami if even only once or even by force one brings the form of the supreme personality of god into one's mind one can attain the supreme salvation by the mercy of krishna as did agasura what then is to be said of those whose hearts the supreme personality of godhead enters when he appears as an incarnation or those who always think of the lotus feet of the lord who is the source of transcendental bliss for all living entities and by whom all illusion is completely removed so this is about the the form of the lord and bringing it into your mind and here's the purport so to pour some nectar into your ears the process for receiving the favor of the supreme personality of god it is described here yet pada punkachapalasha vilasa bhaktya simply by thinking of krishna one can attain him very easily krishna is also described as having his lotus feet always within the hearts of his devotees bhagavan bhakta ridistita in the case of agasura one may argue that he was not a devotee the answer to this is that, that he thought of krishna for a moment with devotion bhaktyaham ekaya grahya bhaktyaham ekaya grahya without devotion one cannot think of krishna and conversely whenever one thinks of krishna one undoubtedly has devotion although agasura's purpose was to kill krishna for a moment agasura thought of krishna with devotion 
and Krishna and his associates wanted to sport within Nagasura's mouth. Similarly, Putana wanted to kill Krishna by poisoning him, but Krishna took her as his mother because he had accepted the milk of her breast. Especially when Krishna appears as an, as an avatar, anyone who thinks of Krishna in his different incarnations, and especially in his original form as Krishna, attains salvation. There are many instances of this, and among them is Dagasura, who attained the salvation of Sarupya Mukti. Therefore, the process when we speak of Krishna, we refer to his all his avatars, such as Krishna, Govinda, Narayan, Vishnu, Lord Chaitanya, Krishna Balaram, and Shamasundara. One who always thinks of Krishna must attain Vimukti, special salvation as the Lord's personal associate, not necessarily in Vrindavan, but at least in Vaikuntha. This is called Sarupya Mukti. So the next evidence about the power of seeing the form of the Lord or worshiping the deity, Rupa Goswami gives, is in 325.35. This is in the Glories of Devotional Service by Srila Kapiladev. And he says, Pashanti te me vichiranyam basanta O my mother, my devotees always see the smiling face of my form with eyes like the rising morning sun. They like to see my various transcendental forms, which are all benevolent, and they also talk favorably with me. Now listen carefully as I pour some nectar into your ears. Purport, my avadis and atheists accept the forms of the deities in the temple of the Lord as idols, but devotees do not worship idols. They directly worship the Supreme Personality of Godhead in his archa incarnation. Archa refers to the form which we can worship in our present condition. Actually, in our present state, it is not possible to see God in his spiritual form because our material eyes and senses cannot conceive of a spiritual form. We cannot even see the spiritual form of the individual soul. When a man dies, we cannot see how the spiritual form leaves the body. That is the defect of our material senses. In order to be seen by our material senses, the Supreme Personality of God, it accepts a favorable form, which is called Archa Vigraha. This Archa Vigraha, sometimes called the Archa Incarnation, is not different from him. Just as the Supreme Personality of God, it accepts various incarnations, he takes on forms made out of matter, clay, wood, metal, and jewels. There are many Shastra conjunctions which give instructions for carving forms of the Lord. These forms are not material. If God is all-pervading, then he is also in the material elements. There is no doubt about this. But the atheists think otherwise. Although they preach that everything is God, when they go to the temple and see the form of the Lord, they deny that he is God. According to their own theory, everything is God. Then why is the deity not God? Actually, they have no conception of God. The devotee's vision, however, is different. Their vision is smeared with love of God. As soon as they see the Lord in his different forms, the devotees become saturated with love. For they do not find any difference between the Lord and his form in the temple, as do the atheists. The smiling face of the deity in the temple is beheld by the devotees as transcendental and spiritual, and the decoration of the body of the Lord is very much appreciated by the devotees. It is the duty of the spiritual master to teach how to decorate the deity in the temple, how to cleanse the temple, and how to worship the deity. There are different procedures and rules and regulations which are followed in temples of Vishnu, and devotees go there to see the deity, the Vigraha, and spiritually enjoy the form, because all of the deities are benevolent. The devotees express their minds before the deity, and in many instances the deity also gives answers. 
but one must be a very elevated devotee in order to be able to speak with the Supreme Lord. Sometimes the Lord informs the devotee through dreams. These exchanges of feelings between the deity and the devotee are not understandable by atheists, but actually the devotee enjoys them. Kapila Muni is explaining how the devotees see the decorated body and face of the deity and how they speak with him in devotional service. So the first of the five is to worship the deity in the temple. And there's a little evidence given by Rupa Goswami about the importance of remembering the form of the Lord, keeping it within one's mind, can produce vimukti, liberation by which one goes back and has a personal relationship with the Supreme Personality of God eternally in the spiritual world. And there very specifically we hear from Shukadeva Goswami or from Kapila Dev about the deity worship also, how the devotees maintain the archa form of the Lord. And that's a form that the, the Lord agrees to assume so that anyone can go there and offer him a, flute, a fruit, a flower, some water. And for those who are advanced sadhakas, those advanced devotees uh, come closer and closer to deity worship and spend time making sandalwood paste and smearing it on the lotus feet of the Lord and growing flowers for the Lord, making outfits, getting the best of jewelry for the Lord and so forth. And all of these are um, within the process of deity worship. And this is one of the five that is wonderful and difficult to understand. But if one performs this, then one will find that one advances very quickly on the path of devotional service. And keep in mind, he said, Swalpam, even if you have a little connection with this, doesn't mean that you have to do it all the time. But it says, he says, does Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, even if you don't have faith in it, if you have a little connection and you're not offensive, then you'll make advancement to the ultimate goal. Now, I just, uh, I have evidence for each one of these points, but I'm going to do one more and then we'll take some discussion. The next is uh, the power of Srimad Bhagavatam. And to support this, Srila Rupa Goswami quotes from the first canto, first chapter, second verse. Dharma projita kaitavotra paramoni matsaranam satam vidyam vasama matravastu shivadam tapatrayan mulanam. Srimad Bhagavate Mahamuni Krite Kimba Prairishvara Sadyo Ridyavaru Jate Trakriti Bi Shu Shu Shabis Tat So, in the word for word, very important, as mentioned here, of course, that um, Dharma Proji to Kaitavo, this uh, Bhagavatam he's announcing is uh, rejecting all religious activities of materially motivated and propounding the highest truth. And the definition of the highest truth is given as distinguishing reality from illusion for the welfare of all. And uh, then he goes on to say, it's understandable by those devotees who are not envious. They're, they're pure in heart. You're not saranam. They don't envy others. Um, it uproots the threefold miseries. This truth uproots the threefold miseries. And this beautiful Bhagavatam compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity is sufficient in itself for God realization. What is the need of any other scripture? And finally, Sadyo Hridyavarudyate Tra Krati Bishu Shushibishtakshana. So here it is said, Sadyo at once, Shridi within the heart, Avaru. Kampatra herein kritibi by the pious men, shushushubi by culture takshana. So kritibi means those who are following this path of devotional service. They've dedicated their lives to doing uh, the process of bhakti. And when they hear the Srimad Bhagavatam, sadyo hridyavarudyate tra kritibi shushushubi takshana, means that uh, without delay, takshana. By this culture of hearing Bhagavatam, Shushushubi, then uh, what happens? Ishvara Sadyaridi. He becomes at once a varujite, a compact, probably translates a compact in the heart, means he's, uh, 
he'll stay there in the heart. He won't leave. For those who are hearing the Bhagavatam, Krishna he also wants to hear Bhagavatam. He wants to be in the heart of such a devotee. So the sure way to make advancement in devotional service is just to give oral reception to the Srimad Bhagavatam. And if one gives submissive oral reception to this book, then uh, Krishna will make all arrangements. Not only that, he'll camp out in your heart. He won't leave you. He'll be there at every second of your life. That's how auspicious this is. So that's the evidence given for Srimad Bhagavatam. There's much, much more to say about that, of course. But now we're going to, before I go on to the, to the giving evidence from Rupa Goswami about devotees, Srinam, and Mathura. Uh, we'll take a few reflections or questions. Hmm. Mahanandini Radhika Devi Dasi. I am listening from Panama, South America. She's listening from Panama, South America. Welcome. Um, I'm about to finish reading your book, Family Business. It has greatly inspired me. Please bless me. One day I can put into practice the instructions and advice you gave in this book. May Lord Chaitanya empower you to put into um, practice all the instructions in the book. Hare Krishna. And uh, let's see what else we have here in the chat box. Question for Grahastas Is there minimum daily expectation for deity worship? <laughs> It uh, really depends. Um, no, there's not a minimum daily expectation for Grahastas. But it is important for Grahastas to have deities in their home. Uh, Prabhupada recommended Guru and Goranga, means uh, Lord Chaitanya and Lord Ananda, because they're very merciful. Worship of Radha Krishna and uh, you know many other different uh, forms of the Lord are more difficult. But the easiest is to worship um, Shishi Gornitai, or Lord Jagannath, and um, the the minimum is for them is to do Sankirtan. Prabhupada mentions this, you'll see in the Shikshamrita, Prabhupada's instructions on deity worship, he says, to many grahastas, you keep the form of, of Guru Gauranga in your home, and you can do, uh, you can worship them by Sankirtan. It means just chant to them. And then, uh, that's very nice. And uh, you can just have pictures if you like. Uh, Prabhupada started the movement with pictures of, of Panchatattva. In fact, my friend Divyanga has one of the original uh, oil paintings of the Panchatattva uh, on, on one of his altars in his home that was kept on the altar. As, as uh, Krishna himself tells in the 11th canto of Srimad Bhagavatam to Uddhava, that there are many different ways in which the deity can be manifest and one of them is through paint which means that you can paint the picture of Krishna and worship that and was there anything else here uh, innocent kids and simple hearted person so I'm I trying have, to understand it, how one can be reflections of oh Bali Mardan Prabhu Hare Krishna from you. outer space thank you very much so I know today is our Mother's Day like to wish all our Mother's Day to every Mother's Day temple and um, I just wanted to read one of my friends and it's very reflective that how in the Mother's Day, like um, Thomas Edison, when he was a kid and he went and came to his mom and he sold one a paper slip and he told that this is my teacher gave and he just asked me to only you can read it. And can you read it for me? So the mother opened and she told him, yes, it is written that you are too small for the small classroom because you are a genius and your intelligence is uh, unbelievable. So better your mother teach you, means better you teach. So then she started getting education. But when Edison became very old and he wanted to open that letter and that letter contains that your son is mentally ill. He is not doing anything better you keep at home. So how a mother translated this language and giving it motivations to a greater extent. You know, that's why Edison say I became this today because of my mother's care and because of my mother's confidence in me. So just like you read this from Bhagavatam, which is Kapila Dev, how he's teaching to his mother and he's giving confidence to his mother also. So this is like a great reflection from my Well, thank you. Now I've just tried, now I know why my mother told me I was a genius because I've mentally retired. <laughs> <laughs> 
I finally figured it out after 64 years. Okay. Thank you, Pali Mardan Prabhu. Um, let's see. Uh, Hari Ramesh, to everyone, question, how do we discern if Krishna is informing us in a dream or if it is our mind talking and leading us to more trouble? Best thing is to ask your guru. Is this the person you are talking about that I saw in my dream? And, uh, and that will help. Um, Tadia Seva, a quick question on illusion. I'm curious as to how one would be able to be offenseless. Oh, this is Bumi. Bumi, you made it. Good. I am curious as to how one would be able to be offenseless without having faith. Well, um, if one, uh, the first, the definition of faith, Shraddha Shabdi Bishwas Kohi Sudri Dagnas Joy Krishna Bhakti Koila Sarva Karma Kritahoi. This is from uh, Chaitanya Charnamita, Kaviraj Goswami says that faith means that you have this growing sense that if I just do devotional service, everything else will be done. And um, you might um, not have uh, awakened that kind of thing, but you might have the sense of uh, being connected with, with the process as Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, which I'll quote from now, as I think it will help in this context, if you look at the uh, 13th chapter, but he talks about how one comes to see Krishna, it's a very similar idea. Um, this is in a uh, in Bhagavad Gita 1326, where Krishna says, Anye Again, there are those who, although not conversant in spiritual knowledge, begin to worship the Supreme Person, person upon hearing about him from others. Because of their tendency to hear from authorities, they also transcend the path of birth and death. So some people, just by nature, they have this um, tendency to hear from others. They, they don't necessarily have faith in, in the five angas of bhakti, but they're kind of open and, and just sweet. And they just like, okay, I'll listen to it. They don't have faith in it yet because they, they didn't even know what it is. But the, they're not offensive. They haven't developed this mentality like the Vedavadaratis who know everything already. Like the man I met when we were going door to door. It wasn't the first time, of course, but I... He saw the Bhagavad Gita in my hand. And he said, I know everything. <laughs> and, he, and so some people become offensive because they think they know everything and, and nobody can tell them anything and they start speculating. So this is a non-speculative type of person. And um, Aprame says, um, reflection about oral reception. I remembered a quote I saved from Srila Prabhupada, the more one hears about Krishna, the more one becomes enlightened and detached from everything that draws the mind from Krishna. By detaching the mind from activities not devoted to the Lord, one can very easily learn Vairagya. Yes, as we know, Vasudeva Bhagavati Bhakti Yoga Prayojita Janiyat Yashu Vairagyam Jnanam to come. Just by performing the direct processes of devotional service, one naturally develops knowledge and detachment from the world. There are concomitants. And then we have uh, in Dharma Prochita, verse is the illusion, Srila Vyasadeva uh, is, this, is the material world. Can we come to the conclusion this material world is an illusion? Yes, you can. It is. It's a, ref it's a reflective image. It's illusory. It's not false, but it's very temporary. And going after it is like a little bird. Have you ever seen a bird where it see sees its reflection in the mirror? not in the mirror, but in a window, and it just keeps banging its head on, on that. Or if you were very hungry and you saw that there was a big feast, but the feast that you see is in a mirror, it's a mirror image. So then you run in to get that uh, food and you smash into the wall because uh, it's just a mirror. So then you think, well, I just didn't try hard enough. So then you get back a little further and you run harder. <laughs> So this is the illusion of the material world. There's nothing to enjoy here. 
Like the police sometimes say when they're moving the crowd, nothing to see here, keep moving. Sri Vatsa says, Hare Krishna, Balaram and I were reflecting during reading today on how sweet, st sweetly straightforward Bhagavatam is. It gives you the truth whether you want it or not. And there's a sweetness to it because it drops love of God into your lap whether you want it or not. That's really nice. I like that a lot. And Dainiti Prabhu, uh, was my question not fit to ask? Up about eight, uh, eight up about faith and offenseless. Let's see. Did I answer that already? Dianiti Prabhu, did I miss it? If I did, can you write it? It's way at the top. First one. First one, huh? Ankita Dianiti. I'm trying to understand how one can be offenseless without having faith. It's the exact same question Bhumi asked, so uh, I think I answered it. I hope I did. Dianiti Prabhu, if I didn't, then just. Uh, Send me a letter bomb or something like that. Okay. All right. Um, any other, anybody else live wants to make a, a reflection or ask a question? Yes, Maharaj, I, I have a question here. Uh, okay. So thank you so much, Maharaj, for emphasizing the, you know, the power of uh, five principles. And then you specifically read that purport twice, right? I'm uh, glad you said it was Dira Prashant because I wouldn't have recognized you. <laughs> so the, the, the purport... Go ahead. The, the purport yeah, where you read about, you know, just by being a little connected, right? Uh, uh, the, the Prabhupada mentions, you know, a devotee can awaken his dormant love for Krishna. So at times, right, like when we uh, associate with the devotees, you know, in the temple or outside, you know, I, I come across like a lot of terms. I like at times, you know, I heard, I hear that the devotee is very strict. At times I hear that, oh, he's a very sincere devotee. You know, he goes across in sadhana and duties, you know, in a very diligent way. And then at times I, I hear that, you know, uh, he's very serious, right? Sincere, strict, and serious. So my question is, so what should be the attitude of a devotee? Should he be sincere? Should he be strict? Or should he be serious? All three. I talked about it in our family business and I gave definitions to those, but what should be the attitude of a devotee? That is mentioned, Sve um, Sve Adhikariya Nishta Saguna Parikirtita Vipariyat Dosha said it's a fixed principle that you should do your best. Everybody has different capacities. Some people in their last life, they did some big stuff and cleared a lot of an artist and they come out in this world and you know, they're practically like, uh, they know the Gita by the time they're six and they're giving commentary on it, you know, by the time they're seven. And you know, if you compare yourself to them, you know, you may feel like I'm not doing anything, but Krishna yeah. says, Sway Sway Adhikari, according to your capacity, do, do the best you can. And the point is, it's, it's, it's about the quality of your sincerity. If you're sincere and you try, no matter how much you can do, some people, their hands are tied. It's really hard for them, either mentally, physically, situationally, to do devotional service, but if they're sincere, in the corner of their heart, they're just praying to Krishna, let me do this for you, even though I can barely do anything. I'll give you an example. With the, uh, the child in the womb. So if you study those prayers really carefully, you'll find out that there's the child in the womb who becomes fortunate because Krishna's there with us all the time. And when we're in the womb, it's a very, it's a very uh, obviously transitional period, and it's traumatic as well. Because when, when the child in the womb develops to a certain period, uh, to a certain point, he or she becomes aware that, oh, here I am again, by Krishna's grace, becomes aware. And the question is, you know, is that person, is it a good or a bad situation? Well, physically, it's really bad. They're stuck in there. Not only that, they're going to come out and get captured by the illusory energy. So now they start to pray and if you notice the prayers of the soul within the womb they're very moving actually and the soul then says that i can't do anything even offer prayers to you without your grace in fact i can't even move right now but somehow or other krishna's arranged that the little fetus's hands are together like this so he's saying by your grace somehow or other i'm offering you obeisances <laughs> and that's my devotional service so if you find yourself stuck somewhere, like in a womb, 
or in a you know a situation anywhere in the material world where you can't move even R remember that you know you know put your hands like this or remember whatever situation you're in you can offer it to krishna and that's what counts ultimately and the more capacity krishna gives us and the more we take advantage of that capacity when he gives it to us the more we grow in krishna consciousness and we'll be we'll become happy is that all right yes thank you much okay. Hare krishna. all right we have um oh look at this we have Shringara Rasa Devi came back. My mother, Bhakti Prem Lata, has a question. She has no devotee association, so what should you do? Get a Zoom account, because that's where it's happening right now. Get on Zoom. You can associate with the devotees all over the planet, and Bhumi Devi Dasi will show you how to get set up on Zoom if you don't know. Ananda Vrindavan Devi says, Vigraha means expansion or extension. If we take the literary meaning, I'm moving this over, sorry. <laughs> if we take the, the literary meaning of Sanskrit to English, that means the Lord is expanding himself to the deity form, then how people deny that and think the Arch of Vigraha is idle, even though they are Sanskrit scholars. Well, here's the thing. You can't understand or see Krishna without a little devotion in your heart. And so think of it this way. Lord Chaitanya was on the planet 500 years ago. He sent out Haridas Thakur and Lord Nityananda to go door to door. And you know what? When he was going door, when they were going door to door, people told them to get lost. They said, get out of here, you know? And some of them like slammed the door on him and when Lord Chaitanya walked around, people didn't understand necessarily yeah. he was the Supreme Personality of God. It was to speak of Krishna himself. So even when Krishna comes personally and walks on the earth and performs miracles, people, according to their capacity, see him in a certain way. So, um, yeah, that's mentioned by Sh uh, Sh uh, Shukadeva Goswami in the 10th chapter of the Srimad Bhagavatam. One second, I have to turn something off because I'm getting contacted here from outer space. Um, he says, uh, yeah, actually it's mentioned in the Bhagavatam about how when Krishna goes into the wrestling arena, that um, the, the various people there saw him according to their own mentality. So the yogis saw the super soul coming in. The atheist just saw an ordinary person, etc. So it, it's up to our capacity. And finally, Sri Lakshmi, devotional service in any of the five forms that you're discussing provides scientific knowledge of Krishna. Spiritual knowledge is confidential knowledge and the key to unlock this knowledge is devotional service. Absolutely. Krishna Nam Prabhu, any advice for someone who lost his sincerity? Well, how do you know you lost it? Did you look around really carefully? I mean, one thing is, you know, when we're chanting, uh, we should be looking for it. Like we left it, I left it somewhere. I knew it was there somewhere. If you've had it once, you can find it again. Just keep searching for it. And in the process of searching for sincerity, lo and behold, more sincerity manifests itself. It's something that's inherent there in the soul, is to be sincere. So you just have to look and you will find it. Gandharvika Radha, Dandavats, my obeisance to you too. If Lord Krishna's form is so potent that just by thinking of those forms one can get liberated, why other forms like Nishringadev is being worshipped. No, Prabhupada mentioned any of the forms uh, can be uh, brought into the mind and so forth. And they're, they're all transcendental, all uh, forms of the Lord. It's just that everyone has their own particular um, taste for worshipping the Lord. That's why the Lord appears in so many forms. Ramadi murti shukala niyamina tishtan nanavataram akaro bhuvani shukintu krishna sayam but that this is, uh, you know, the unfolding of all these different forms. Prophet explains this in the third canto of the Bhagavatam, when Vidura was going around seeing the various forms of the Lord in all the holy places. Prophet says that there are various manifestations of the Lord 
to uh, reciprocate with and accommodate the um, the love of the devotees. Someone said, and you stopped reading it. Okay. Okay, let's see. Um, and that's it. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. This is Gopal Champu Das. Wow, Gopal Champu. Are you in Georgia? Yes, Guru Maharaj. We're here in uh, near Atlanta. Can you hear your voice? I was starting to get worried about you. <laughs> How's it going? Uh, we're doing okay. We actually, uh, Georgia's opening up a little bit on the restrictions, so... We've yeah, well, you're, you're doing better than okay, I can tell. <laughs> Go ahead. So, um, just <clears throat> on this point of the five um, processes of devotional service, most powerful processes, I was just contemplating this um, just the other day. I had con and just in my contacting people, I came across um, one lady, and after talking to her for some time, she revealed to me that she was actually um, an initiated devotee. And she lived in the temple for eight years and did book distribution full time. Um, but that she had gone away from devotional service. So I was just contemplating this, how these, just even a little contact with these five forms of devotional service is so powerful. And how can it seemingly come to the point where a devotee then can stop practicing altogether? Well, we have free will. And we can execute it any time. And also, we're very tiny, so we, it's easy to get pushed around by the material energy. And keep in mind that whatever devotional practice somebody does is never lost. Krishna confirms this in the sixth chapter of the Bhagavad Gita and elsewhere. And, you know, even in the second chapter, Swalpam up Yasutarma Even a little bit, it's, it's permanent. So people uh, who start devotional service and then give it up are, are not, um, they get forward progress that's counted. Narda, fifth chapter of the first canto, the Bhagavatam, he says, if you give up everything, take to devotional service wholeheartedly, and then it turns out you are a pakva, you weren't ready for that. You were unripe and you fall down, patet. That he said, well, better that <laughs> than you got it all. You, you went on with your material life and you know you didn't take to devotional service because that uh, is permanent. And that will awaken at another time, sometimes in this lifetime. And if, as you stick around devotional service in this lifetime, you'll see people come and go for various odd reasons. You know, it's hard to figure out. You know, sometimes what happens is an anarta floats to the surface and somehow the person concentrates on it, gets distracted and then dragged away. But then you'll see later on, they resurface and they take up where they left off before. Unless they were super offensive to devotees, then it takes a lot, lot longer unless they rectify the offense. So uh, there's never lost and it's it's the power of maya so we have to be careful it's a good idea to put in one full lifetime of devotional service without getting off without without getting off the parikram trail you know just don't get off for any reason uh don't get uh, disturbed so fortify yourself ahead of time because uh spiritual life is like a razor's edge you know if you step the wrong way or do something you can you know cause bloodshed to yourself but it doesn't mean that you're finished and it doesn't mean that any of it goes in vain. You know, I've always thought of, you know, our community here at ISV. Um, we can do a little bit here. Everybody's doing a little bit, mostly of the five main items. So consider it, you know, we hear a little Bhagavatam together regularly. We, uh, we have devotee association. We uh, worship the deity. We chant Hare Krishna. And we live in Mathura. A lot of devotees go to Mathura visit or, you know, the temple is considered Mathura. And so even though everyone's got family and businesses and all kinds of things to do because we're each doing a little bit, 
And in these five, the devotees I'm watching, they're becoming successful in devotional service because they're, mm -hmm. they have a little connection to it. And, and it's not that they don't have faith, they have complete faith in it. And so these five are very powerful. If you want to start a community somewhere and you want it to be successful, just emphasize these five and let people do as much as they can with that, even if it's even if it's Su Alpam and they're in contact with the five, four, three, two, or one, they're gonna be successful. Does that help? Yes, Gumash. Okay. Thank you. Gumash, yes. yes, please go ahead. Gumash, as a tag to that question, I wanted to ask um, that you know uh this is Manjula Gumash. Okay, uh, there you are. I yes. wanted to ask that um, uh, why is it that, uh, that um, sometimes when we are trying to continue in devotional service for longer periods of time, the initial euphoria goes away and then there is a, over the years as we stagnate, so to speak, then the urgency starts to build and we realize, you know what, this, I got to get serious and I, I need to make more progress and I want more. Then we see two types of devotees, the ones who just started and they're super happy just coming to the temple, eating some prasadam, getting association. And sometimes you're in the middle of the ocean, you're neither on this shore or on that shore, and you look at them and think, that was so much nicer. And then you look this side, and then there are these really sincere devotees who've almost made it home, you know? And you're like, they're almost there, and these guys are happy. And then it's me in the middle of the ocean. <laughs> I don't know when I'm going to reach. I, so even the previous shore seems tempting, Maharaj. I don't know how, if I'm explaining it right. Ignorance is bliss sometimes. But I can't be ignorant anymore. Well, and you're stuck with Vilakanta. <laughs> because, you, you know, you already dove in the water. So you already know, you know, yeah. <laughs> know that he hasn't any good. There's this, uh, there's an impression, these impressions in the mind that, you know, remember the old days and sense gratification. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we try to rehash it. Punak punas chavita charvananam. You know, maybe there's something in it. But once you've tasted a little Krishna consciousness, then you can't go back. And um, the the advice that uh, that the that the acharyas give is, you know, when you find yourself in the middle of that ocean, keep swimming. I had this experience when I was writing my book. You know, who am I to write a book? And there I am writing a book, and I'm in. The, I didn't know if I was in the middle of it. It was like being in the middle of the ocean. And so all I could do is keep swimming because I had no idea when it was going to be finished. I already committed to it. And it was like a lot bigger project than I thought. It's like building a house or something. And I don't know how to build the house. So all I could do is keep swimming. And if you can't swim dog paddle, but just keep moving in the right direction, because as, as, as uh, Akura says in his prayers, you will eventually reach the shore. And don't think you won't. You'll definitely reach the shore, and Krishna will give you a lot of help when you go. And you're a lot further along than you think, too. Uh, the distance that you have to go is a lot shorter than the distance you've come. You've won the lottery of the species as a human, coming a human. What to speak of? Manushanam sahasreshu kashid yatati siddhaye yatatam api siddhanam kashin mambeti tatvata muktanam api siddhanam narayana parayanam. You know, there's all these verses about how rare it is to get the association of devotees to take. So, you know, give yourself a little pat on the back there. And um, the other thing is to, to be always look to spot offenses. Don't get uh, don't get complacent. And that's true, not just in devotional service, in any discipline, you have to keep renewing yourself and remembering, go back to the basics. The best coaches in the world are ones that keep uh, training their they're, they're uh, athletes in, um, th in the fundamentals. They start them over again, like don't take these for granted. Go back to these and also the Buddhistic idea, beginner's mind. Be a beginner. You know, it's really nice to be humble. Trinata be sunichena, that's what Lord Chaitanya said. Here's the panacea. Just be humble and say, I don't know anything. <laughs> I'm not anywhere. And one of the reasons that, that we can get complacent as we continue is, is it's easy to develop a sense of entitlement. This is something that Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur mentions in the Madhurya Kadambani. He says that you can get washed away by wave. What happens is you take the devotional service, 
you get a little senior, you get a little advancement and other people see you and then they're like, oh, you're so great. And then the next thing you think, well, maybe I am great. So maybe people should lavish a little more on me than I'm getting now. This is the entitlement mentality. Jamuna, Prabhupada's disciple Jamuna, she used to say that this is the, the most dangerous of all the uh, mentalities that one can develop. And she noticed it, and she said, and a, and a lot of her god brothers, god sisters, that after time they start thinking, "Hey, I'm special. I'm a proper disciple. So you know, either I should have a free ticket back to God, and everybody else <laughs> should treat me like that too." I mean, maybe that's true, but the fact is, no one should think like that. Don't touch it. It's anathema. It'll poison you. So. You know, there's more responsibility as you move forward. And it's not that people necessarily, when they come in, you know, there's a freshness of enthusiasm called Utsahan Mayi. Uh, and, and, you know, you get that as a beginner. When you learn to play the piano, you sit down, you have like five lessons, and then you start thinking, I'm a maestro here. And watch out, you know, here I come. But when you get a little further along and you start thinking like, I'll never be any good. Because I'm just, it's not in me like it is in some prodigies or something like that. So there's a lot of things you have to motivate yourself for the main thing. Just keep the main thing, the main thing. And somehow or other stay alive in Krishna consciousness because you're going to inherit the kingdom of God. If you don't do anything else but hang around and don't be offensive for your whole lifetime, you, you're going to, you know, Krishna will take care of you. Just hang around, do your, do your bhajan, get your bhajan on, do it. You don't have to become famous. You don't have to be a big shot. You don't have to, all you have to do is stay alive and you're going to be successful. Okay. Thank you. Maya. Hare Krishna. Okay. We have just a couple minutes left and I want to give a little more evidence here. Rupa Goswami talks about the devotees. Uh, so I've talked about deities. I've talked about Srimad Bhagavatam. For the devotees, he goes to 10.51.53. And here it is. This is a verse that uh, Govinda Prabhu quoted the other day. It's a very famous verse. 10.51.53. Vava pavar go brahmato yada bavej janas sitar yachuta sat samagama Satsangamo yarhi to daiva sat gatao parava reshe twai jaya te mati. When the material life of a wandering soul has ceased, O Achuta, he may attain the association of your devotees, and when he associates with them, there awakens in him devotion unto you, who are the goal of the devotees and the Lord of all causes and their effect. So spake Muchikunda. Uh, and here's the purport. Acharya's Jiva Goswami and Vishnu Chakravarti agree on the following point. Although it is stated here that when material life ceases, one attains the association of devotees. In fact, it is the association of the Lord's devotees that enables one to transcend material existence. Srila Jiva Goswami explains this apparent inversion of sequence by quoting the Kavya Prakash as follows Karya Karanayosh Cha Parva Parya Viparya Yo Vignati Shakyoti Syatsa, a statement in which the logical order of a cause and its effect is reversed should be understood as Ati Shayoti, emphasis by extreme ex assertion. Srila Jiva Goswami cites the following commentary on this statement. Karanasya shigra karitam vaktum karyasya purvam uktao. To express the swift action of a cause, one may assert the result before the cause. Now you know what the Kavya Prakash says about that. And it's important because it seems like the, the order is re reversed in this verse. In this connection, Srila Vishnu Chakravarti points out that the merciful association of the Lord's devotees makes possible our determination to become Krishna conscious. And the Acharyas agree with Srila Jiva Goswami and uh, that this verse is an instance of Ati Shayokti. One thing is, remember um, to worship the Vaishnavas 
and all different kinds of Vaishnavas. Some of them you worship in your mind. Some of you offer obeisances physically and others you dedicate your life to them and try to serve. And uh, don't offend devotees. Be really careful. And if you accidentally do, then try to make up for it by getting forgiveness and you'll be successful. And finally, Rupa Goswami. Uh, oh, there was more. Uh, the holy name. And this is from Srimad Bhagavatam 6 to 9 through 10. This is a famous verse, and Prabhupada gives a long, long purport at the end of this chapter that I won't read right now. The chanting of the holy name of Lord Vishnu is the best process of atonement for a thief of gold or other valuables, for a drunkard, for one who betrays a friend or relative, for one who kills a brahmana, or for one who indulges in sex with the wife of his guru or another superior. It is also the best method of atonement for one who murders women, the king or his father, for one who slaughters cows, and for all other sinful men. Simply by chanting the holy name of Lord Vishnu, such sinful persons may attract the attention of the Supreme Lord, who therefore considers, because this man has chanted my holy name, my duty is to give him protection. That's pretty self-explanatory. <laughs> Anyone who doesn't chant after that is really stupid. Okay, now finally, I want to read you something very, very sweet about Mathura, because that's the last one. And this is uh, from the Brihat Bhagavatam Rita, uh, part one. And it's uh, Brihat Bhagavatam Rita 1.1.4. And uh, the, the verse starts with Jayati Mathura Devi. And here it is. Uh, let me pour some nectar into your ears. May I? Please say yes. 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 Okay, couldn't hear anybody. Okay, yeah. thumbs up everywhere. Okay, here goes. Ready? Check this out. All glories to the goddess Mathura Devi, the best of holy cities. She enchants the mind. She is most dear to the enemy of Kamsa, and she is adorned with the Lord's birthplace. The city of Mathura is acclaimed throughout the world for dispelling misery and bestowing liberation and devotion, not to mention the various pastimes the Lord has played there. Commentary by Sanatana Goswami. Lord Sri Krishna has great affection for the holy land of Mathura because it is adorned with the sights of many of his favorite eternal pastimes. Mathura district is therefore the one place in the material universe where the perfection of all human endeavor, pure love of God, can be easily obtained. To gain the favor of Sri Mathura Devi, the author praises her in this verse. Devi means a ruling goddess or one who is perpetually effulgent because Mathura has the Supreme Lord Krishna always present within her borders she is untouched by fear from time and other causes of destruction. Thus, she is the best of the seven principal holy cities, Kashi, Kanchi, Avanti, Mathura, Ayodhya, Mayapuri, Haridwar, and Dwarka, which can each award liberation, as we learn from the authority of the Skanda Purana, Kashi Kanda 6.68. Certainly she is better than all the other cities throughout the universe, high and low, belonging to humans, demigods, and even the incarnations of God. Sri Mathura is supremely attractive, and she pleases the mind of anyone who comes in contact with her, for she fulfills all categories of desires. In this regard, the Skanda Purana, Vaishnava Kanda states, to those who have material desires, Mathura gives the three aims of human work, religiosity, economic development, and sense gratification. To those who want liberation, Mathura grants liberation. And to those rare souls who want pure devotion, Mathura gives pure devotion. What intelligent person, therefore, would not take shelter of Mathura? For these reasons, Mathura is very dear to Sri Krishna, the enemy of the wicked King Kamsa. She indeed has received Krishna's special favor after Krishna killed Kamsa. The residents of Mathura hardly ever suffered fear or distress. 
Krishna's greatest favor to Mathura, however, is that he takes birth and resides within her precincts. Mathura Bhagavan Yatra Nityam Sanihito Hari Lord Hara, Bhagavatam 10.128 Adorned with the Supreme Lord's birthplace and residence, Mathura dispels all misfortune and bestows both liberation and pure devotion. For this she is glorified throughout the world. But the glory Mathura district gains when Lord Krishna exhibits his Rasalila and other intimate pastimes is beyond anyone's power to describe. Many Puranas confirm that Mathura frees from karmic misfortune those who come to her. The Varaha Purana 165.57 through 58 states the reaction from a sin committed elsewhere can be dissolved when one visits a holy place of pilgrimage. Whereas a sin committed at such a holy tirtha creates an irremovable diamond hard shell to cover the sinner. But the reaction from a sin committed in Mathura can be done away with in Mathura itself. Mathura is therefore the most auspicious of holy cities where sinful reactions do not persist. The same Purana also states, whatever sinful reactions one may have accrued in the past, knowingly or unknowingly, are all destroyed in Mathura, along with all one's pious and impious karma. According to the Skanda Purana, Vaishnava Kanda 5.17.44, among the various holy cities like Kashi, Mathura is most auspicious because she bestows liberation upon human beings in four ways. In Mathura, they may attain liberation by birth, by vows of initiation, by death, or by cremation. And in the words of the Padma Purana, in other holy places, liberation is the greatest reward one can achieve. But in Mathura, one can gain what is prayed for by the liberated. Devotional service to Lord Hari. Sri Mathura Dham Ki Jai. And now I want to ask somebody from the, our youth group to quote us a verse that glorifies Mathura. Please come off mute and spontaneously give us a verse. I don't want you looking on any screens. Please just say it. But do it fast so it's... Anyone? Anyone? I better take a look, see who's here. I hope you didn't turn off your screens. Who's got it? Go ahead, Avantika. You gotta come off mute. I think you're automatically muted there. Okay. Still muted. Okay, I think I'm... There you go. No looking, just say it. Vaikuntachanitovadamadupuritatrapirasotsavat <laughs> Bravo, bravo. In there, the district of Mathura is mentioned as being supreme. So many verses about, thank you very much, Avantika. I deeply appreciate it. So many verses about Mathura. So we've talked tonight about the five processes, angas of devotional service, um, which bestow the ultimate benefit of life, uh, prema. Krishna Prema, if one has a little contact with them, even if one doesn't have faith in them. It doesn't mean that you can't uh, have full contact with them if you so desire. If you if you wish to, just as uh, Rupa Goswami quotes in the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, if you decide that you're going to take a bath in the confluence of the Ganges and Jamuna and the Saraswati, during the month of Mog, and I've been there at that time, it's freezing cold. <laughs> but you decide you're going to do it, nobody can stop you. So he says in a similar way, if you decide, I'm going to take to this process of devotional service fully, any of these processes I'm going to fully embrace, who can stop you? 
you're a, a, a willful living entity. You have your own volition. You can do it. So this is to help us know where to put that uh, attention, that energy. Concentrate on these five processes and give your heart and soul because Krishna is so kind, especially through these five, that anyone who takes to them will be uh, fully successful in devotional life. And there is no other reason to be walking around as a human being other than a, a, a refining oneself in devotional service. Om Tat Sat. Nachari Armarman, Nachari Armarman, Nachari Armarman, Nachari Armarman, hey, Nachari Armarman, Nachari Armarman, Nachari Armarman, Nachari Armarman.